please understand that at this point in my life, I was a car fanatic. If I wasn't working to afford cars, <laughs> I was watching car content, watching car TV shows, going to car dealerships. To say obsessed is a little bit of an understatement. did not think anything could be worse. My name is Daryl Kemsley and uh, I'm a 24 year old. I, uh, I was born in Hong Kong, moved to Shanghai at six, uh, moved to the States at 12. In the st I went to high school in Boston, uh, lived in Manhattan after high school, but I've been here in Utah for four years now. I grew up in a little tiny apartment in Hong Kong. There's not really much to do as a toddler <laughs> in an apartment in Hong Kong. Uh, so I watched a lot of movies. And uh, my favorite movies growing up were A New Hope, Star Wars, and uh, Back to the Future. And I distinctly remember being three or four when I first realized I can't park a Millennium Falcon in my garage. So that's when I just really, really, really wanted a DeLorean. So I realized that not only do I need a DeLorean, but the only possible way am I going to get into any car is if I were to work and buy it myself. So I actually moved to the Midwest, dropped out of school, I dropped out of college, and I uh, knocked doors, door to doors, and uh, sold pest control. And I did that 12 hours a day for four months, saved up all my money. I made a good chunk of change from working my butt off and sweating in the Midwest. I decided, hey, to hold off and to really just invest it into myself, invest it into my mindset, invest it into my business, and um, that paid off. I decided to buy the DeLorean when I could find the perfect DeLorean for me. I didn't want a random one. I wanted just like they had it in the movie. I found one on eBay that was beautiful, pristine, and perfect. After flights and the car itself and restoration, and given this is a classic car, meaning you can't finance it. You have to do everything cash. It was 52,000. And when it came, it actually uh, came to this house right outside in a big 40 foot truck. I just, it was surreal. I remember when they opened it up and just seeing those tail lights light up and the car backing out, the door opening, it was just, you know, it's from start to finish, from where even I purchased the car at full price to delivery, it's been a good over a year. Every time I got in that car, every time I drove, it didn't matter if it were to the grocery store, to a restaurant down the street, or to the gym, along the way, everyone would give me thumbs up, everybody would honk, everybody would almost crash into me because they're trying to Snapchat and drive. Uh, well, every time I got out to get gas, people would come up to me and I'd hear, I'd hear stuff like, oh my gosh, I've been wanting to see this my entire life, or is that a DeLorean? Great Scott! <laughs> so it took me years and years and years to save up for my first dream car, the DeLorean I wanted my whole life. And it was only, I think, six months after that that I bought um, my dream car since high school. When I was in high school, I used to go to bed with a picture of that car hanging on the ceiling above me. It was just a little, little honestly, it was ridiculous. It was ridiculous having a DeLorean and an i8. It, it was, uh, it was, yeah, it was a little ridiculous. Driving a modern exotic car was kind of different. You get a lot of comments. I've been vandalized, I've been harassed, I've been stalked, and that's just in my physical realm. If we're talking about digitally, what it's like to own a car, like that at a young age, nobody likes you. It was Halloween weekend and uh, it was raining that weekend. Um, because I had a garage full of classics, I didn't want those to be out of the rain. So I made the decision to park the modern day exotic car that goes for $148,000 outside of my home just because it won't rust. Me and my girlfriend got up, we went to the gym and then uh, we just walked outside and right in front of our eyes. I was missing the back windshield. It was completely shattered with a big stone and the front hood was completely messed up. The grill, 
the hood, the front windshield, the back windshield. And uh, that, that was pretty devastating. And when I found out, I was actually in shock. Before that, all the hate and negativity and a, like negative unwanted and unwarranted attention was all in the digital world. And that's so easy to ignore. But when it crossed over from the digital to the physical, it changed my life. It's funny thinking about it because when you're thinking about it with hindsight, it really showcases the immaturity of, of myself even back then. Because back then I did not think anything could be worse. I was turning left and all of a sudden there's a really, really, really big impact and jerk that scooted me forward from the back. And then I look up and see in a rear view mirror, there's a girl in a blue Toyota Prius and she just completely looks panicked. And then I realized, oh, I was rear-ended. <laughs> she skirted across, made the turn, drove off. I tried to catch up. I uh, put it in first gear. I chased after her. And the car just, no matter, it was weird, no matter how high the RPMs got, the speedometer just would not catch up. It was, I couldn't even break 20 miles per hour. And then I noticed dark, dark smoke coming out the back. Uh, I pulled over into a Rite Aid parking lot and I opened up the door, went around the back and I noticed a flame. So I walked into the Rite Aid. I asked them if I could use a fire extinguisher the lady that was working did not let me use it. She said company policy, no. And the car just got burnt to a crisp. What was crazy about that day and that incident was how mistreated I was. It was kind of like I was entertainment. Everybody was pointing, everyone was taking pictures. I was crying, <laughs> I was sitting out on the curb. Um, it was sad, but I didn't even know what was sad about it was to come. The, the car community in which I gave up, you know, my social life for completely turned their back on me. Everyone was just making jokes, making memes. People who saw it all loved it and they loved seeing it happen to me. People that I called friends were saying it was an insurance fraud, saying it was an insurance scam. And um, the insurance company like just never paid me. They treated me like I was a criminal. They sent someone out from Texas, they flew him out. He's a collision expert. He told me he found no signs of tamper. The reason why the insurance didn't pay me is because he didn't figure out how it happened. These events changed me as a person. And now with hindsight, I would say for the better. For the first time in my life, I really questioned myself and my abilities. I really doubted myself. I, I, I wondered if, if I'm actually capable or intelligent or, or if I just got lucky. I had to have everything taken away from me to realize that I truly am capable. And I had to have the biggest doubts about myself to realize that I truly am intelligent. And I had to have my dreams and aspirations literally burn down in front of my eyes to realize my dreams and aspirations are not what I really wanted. I say it's okay to have passions, it's okay to have hobbies, that's great, that's what makes life worth living, it's what makes life fun, it's what makes goals, uh, it, gives, it motivates you to even go after goals, you know, it's, it's because you want something that's physical, but just know that that physical goal, once manifested in your garage, on your deck, whatever it is, will never complete you. As someone who, who, who's had everything I've ever wanted. I literally couldn't have anything else 
that I wanted as a kid. I bought everything I've ever imagined. I was never more depressed in my entire life. And that's because if you put your love in other people's opinions, other perspectives, or even other things that just aren't you, you won't be fulfilled. Have your goals, have your ambitions, work. Everyone needs to do the work in their life and you might as well do it now. But please realize why you're doing what you're doing and really figure yourself out first.